So Paul, when we look at this and we look at the, the corona and the chronosphere, there still isn't kind of this clear edge, just kind of keeps going. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a clear edge here. And if we, uh, uh, we can take a, this is what we call a coronagraph image. So what this has done is looking at the sun, but blocking out the light from, it's looking at visible light, but it's kind of a black ring in the middle blocking out the light from the actual sun. So we can see the faint part. It's like an artificial lunar eclipse. Seeing only the corona, that's right. And what you see is every now and then you get events like this taking place where you actually get explosions going outwards. And they obviously, presumably, just keep going. That's right. These are called coronal mass ejections. Um, and they, they, sometimes they will hit the Earth. Yep. Um, so usually they disappear off in some other direction and go and hit some other planet. Because they can go out in any direction from any part of the sun. That's right. Now, we know a bit about this wind coming out yep. from the sun. Um, there's a wind blowing at all times. And uh, NASA's Ulysses, European Space Agency, NASA's Europe, Ulysses Space Probe, went over the poles of the sun in an orbit. Okay. And what you saw is near the poles, there was a steady, fairly fast wind. That's because the magnetic field lines point straight out, so the gas can just escape there. Yep. Near the equator, the wind is slower because you've got the field lines that loop Coming, in and out, yeah. and that kind of traps the gas and stops it getting out so easily. Here's a, a computer simulation of the whole procedure. So you can see the field lines actually escaping out into space, the top and bottom. In the middle, they tend to loop in and out a bit, or maybe coming out of one uh, sunspot and into another one. Though occasionally you get the magnetic field lines that point straight out to drive a stronger wind, yep. and occasionally you get the big explosions. Let's look at a solar flare. So a solar flare is one of these explosions at the surface, and here we'll okay. zoom in on one, look at the different wavelengths. All right. So we'll see it here at uh, one ultraviolet wavelength, and then uh, this is a fairly small flare, so there's been some sort of explosion. The matter has got out, but probably not escaped all the way That's into space. Because right. it kind of looks like it's almost starting to come back at some point. That's right. And these are happening all the time on the sun, no more when it's a solar maximum. Yep. But you can also get much more violent explosions. This is a, what's called a coronal mass ejection, which is really firing large amounts of stuff out. It's probably the same sort of thing, some combination of magnetic field lines blowing outwards and maybe some reconnections in there. So do you always have a solar flare and a coronal mass ejection? I guess a coronal mass ejection is kind of like a really big solar flare. Yeah, so a similar mechanism causing it, but what we're really saying is the coronal mass ejection is likely to escape essentially the sun and keep going in some direction. Yeah, so a coronal mass ejection is when a lot of mass is ejected from the corona. Duh. <laughs> Whereas the flare just means we see something bright at X-ray wavelengths or ultraviolet wavelengths in the sun. It may or may not lead to something being squirted out. Okay, but similar mechanism of what's causing it, we think. That's right. And again, we can see these things with the different coronagraphs, looking at different radii from the sun. So here is a, a animation showing some of these things exploding outwards. And so this is taken from one of those sun viewing satellites where we can yep. corona the middle a little bit further and see how it travels, presumably through space. Yes. Um, and so these sort of explosions are very important and we'll talk in the next video about what they do when they reach deep space. Sounds good.